Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's continue with the Players Cup Originals Qualifier Latin America. And today we have round five. Finally, we are three one, three wins and one loss. And let's continue. This time around, I'm facing an opponent from my own country, from Ecuador. And this guy had a team with the Grimstar, Bavir Berry with Spear Break, Scary Face, Thunder Wave and Fake Tears. Uh, double speed control there, Thunder Wave, you know, to just uh, be able to paralyze mods that have probably Clear Body, for example. And Scary Face, you can like drop the speed to stages on mods that are like, you know, just like ground types or even electric types. Or mods that are, you know, it's better to just have that double speed control because you can decide, I guess that's what my opponent thought, you can decide when to go for itch. And Spectre with Focus Ash, Shadow Bolt, Snar, will Wiz, and Taunt. And Rotom Heat with Safety Goggles, Thunderbolt, Overheat, Nasty Blood, Protect, so we'll Lost all Best with Flash Cannon, Air Slash, Meteor Beam, Flamethrower, Porygon 2 with the Evil Eye, Try Attack, Eerie Impulse, uh, Recover, and Trick Room. And finally, Garchomp with Earthquake, Rock Slide, Skill Shot, and Sword Stance, and a Lumberry. Yeah, remember that both teams are on the description link down below. You can find a team sheet from both teams, from my team and my opponent's team, in the description down below. So uh, let's let's begin just with the video. Thank you for being here. If you like this content, don't forget you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Great. So let's begin. So this is a match that I think like the matchup is probably slightly on my favor. Um, I mean, not nothing too crazy, of course. Um, I do have a Regilecki that can put a lot of pressure to Celestia on the P2 on the Grimstar with Helping Hand, and I have um, a Psychic Terrain basically with my Ndidi that can block the Grimstar completely. Um, can follow me. I can even just like um, you know spam some Mystical Fires into P2 into uh, Spectre even Celestia and Ndidi cannot be one shot by Celestia. It's probably even a two shot or three shot with the Psychic Seed. I think it's a th three shot. And I also have a monster that can ignore um, uh, drops or uh, boost like Urshifu. I can even go for Tapu Fini. They don't have like solid ways of dealing with Tapu Fini. Like Rotom Heat is the only electric type there, of course, but Rotom Heat is also a fire type, so it's weak to Tapu Fini. So I think the matchup is slightly in my favor. Uh, for game one, I'm just gonna go in DD Landers. I think Landers can put a lot of pressure. I'm expecting a card chum in this game one, of, of course, because my opponent knows that I have Regilecki and he knows that I have life form Regilecki also, so he knows that I'm a Dynamax Regilecki. So, yeah, let's begin. Let's begin with this round five of Latin America Originals Qualifier in the Players Cup 4. Let's see how my opponent leads. I'm expecting something like Grimmsnar uh, in the lead and B2 probably. No, there's a Celestia, so Celestia like Grimmsnar immediately, immediately right off the bat. Which is very interesting, actually, because, I mean, probably my opponent was not expecting the Ndidi, I guess. Um, but I, I have Ndidi for matchups with Grimstar, so why wouldn't I bring it? I mean, he doesn't know it, but I guess on Team Premium you can kind of assume that. Since uh, Psychic Terrain is really good against this type of Grimstar. So they don't have even Reflect or Light Scoop. They cannot do anything other than Spirit Break, basically, here. So I'm just going to go for a safe play, turn 1, follow me, Swore Sands. Getting that landers boosted. The psychic seed also activated, so my indeed is plus one speed, uh, plus one special defense. Sorry, and yeah, even like a combination of spear break or something, it's just not gonna be able to uh, get the knockout on Ndidi because Grimstar is also minus one because of the intimidate from landers. We do see a Dynamax Elisila now. I suppose it's just gonna attack with like Max Steel Spike or Max Air Strain. I guess Max Steel Spike makes more sense because it does increase the physical defense. And Landers a physical attacker. I'm not Dynamaxing. I want to have the Dynamax uh, advantage here because I have one more turn. Uh, since I'm not Dynamaxing turn one and they are Dynamaxing turn one. There's the Max Seal Spike into the DD because I went for a follow me. And it's not even able to do 50%. Less than 50, probably around 40%. And Grimstar didn't go for anything. Of course, he cannot go for uh, Prankster attack. So it's just going to go for a Spear Break into the DD. Probably should do like should do around 20 percent 25 yeah 25 percent drop in special attack but landers got a plus two attack stat now um so here i can just go for another follow me but if i go for another follow me like indeed is probably going down so actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just take the opportunity to not click follow me because he knows that the obvious play is just going for a follow me to block any shenanigans like any scary faces slash fake tears option 
and I don't necessarily need to. I can just play with the fact that he has respected, at least for this turn. So I'm going to air swim the Grimstar, and I'm just going to mystical fire this Celestila. Because that makes uh, Celestila less powerful, and it helps me to control a little bit. Because indeed, he at some point is going to go down, so I don't want Celestila to be plus one. I want Celestia to be at least back to neutral. So plus one in speed, indeed he is guaranteed to outspeed Celestia, of course. Uh, Mystical Fire into the Celestia, not doing much damage, but it's mainly for the special attack drop, as I said. And I think probably it's not even going to be able to get rid of Indeedy now. Let's see. Um, yeah, not even able because Indeedy was plus one special defense, and Celestia is now minus one special attack. I suppose we're gonna see a double into the Ndidi Spirit Break. No, actually into the Landers, not into the Ndidi. Okay, that's way better for me now. I suppose what my opponent was trying to do here was like covering if I protect with Ndidi because if he doubles into the Ndidi and I, and I protect, um, Ndidi gets nothing. Like, he gets nothing out of that turn. And he could have doubled the Landers, I guess, but like, he probably wanted the, the beast boost on Ndidi. So now I'm going to play safe, follow me, because I already revealed that I can sometimes unfortunately follow me. It's not worth to do it anymore. Yeah, there's the fake tears. My opponent was saying like, oh, you are not clicking follow me? Then I'm going to try to just go for a fake tears into your landers if I can. So if you let me, that would be awesome. I, I suppose that's what he thought. But this time, I didn't want to risk it again. Uh, I just get, got rid of the Grimstar, because Grimstar can be annoying for later. Because Psychic Terrain at some point is going to end. And Indeedy mainly is going to go down this turn, guaranteed. It was just Red Hill. So Celestila is going to get a Beast Boost, but Celestila was already minus one. That was why the Mystical Fire was way, way more important than what it might would have, uh, you would have thought. Because, like, yeah, I'm risking the Fake Tears into the Landers, but in that scenario, it's pretty difficult for the opponent, for the opponent to go for a Fake Tears, to be honest. Because they know there's just, like, a follow me into Psychic Terrain play, so... It's probably not worth it sometimes, or most of the times. Chapofini from my end now. It's now on the field, and he reveals that the Garchomp is there. Okay, Garchomp. I guess he, of course, had to bring the Garchomp for the red Leggy that I had. And that's exactly what I wanted. Like, I have one turn, one extra turn of, of Dynamax. So here I'm just gonna go for a Calm Mind and Erosin the Garchomp. Actually, I think I can airstream the Celestila. It might sound weird. Like, why are you airstream a Celestila that is, you know, resist, it's, it resists uh, flying? It's because I need some damage. Even though this is what, like 20% damage? I need damage on Celestila because Celestila's plus 3 defense now. So, any damage on Celestila is good. So, I can put it in range of Urshifu's uh, Wiki Blow later. And I also want the, the, the speed boost for Tabafini. That's why I didn't go for uh, Rockfall, for example. I want Tabafini to be faster than uh, both Celestila and, and Garchomp. I mean, it was already faster than Celestila, I think. But not faster than Garchomp. Now with plus one speed, Celestila... Sorry, Tabafini is guaranteed to outspeed Garchomp. Uh, we know that Garchomp is not a Scarf or something. It's just Lumberry. Flash Cannon into Fini. Because of the Combine, this is a great move both offensively and defensively because Tabafini has... Way more special attack now, and way more special defense as well. So I'm not taking that much damage from Flash Cannon. Um, like, the combination of Earthquake that the Garchomp went for and Flash Cannon did almost 50%. So I guess I can just protect now, just to get some left towers recovery. You know, just to play safe. Go for Rock Slide or something with Landorus. And, yeah, get some left towers recovery. Let's see what he does. Rock Slide is not going to do much into Celestia. Remember that Celestia's plus 3 defense. But I can even, like, fish for a flinch or something. No flinch. But yeah, he just doubled into the Fini. Flash got an Earthquake. Fini is getting more left towers recovery. Which is it's nice, of course. And yeah, Garchomp took, like, what, 20%? So I can just safely move less a Garchomp and go for sources now. Because if I source this, I'm going to be plus 4. And I'm going to make up for the fact that Celestila is plus 3 defense. And Celestila is not doing much to Tapu Fini. You saw that the Flash Cannon did by like 20-25%. So I'm just going to move last, get rid of the Garchomp. I know he cannot protect because he doesn't have protect. Um, based on the team sheet. And Celestila Flash Cannon shouldn't do much here. Probably around 25-20%. And wait. Oh, that's a critical hit. Okay. 
I mean, oh, and also special defense drop. Oh, man. Okay. Everything at once. Critical hit and special defense drop. My top of Phoenix would have been way healthier. This is actually a little bit problematic now, to be honest with you guys. Because Tapu Phoenix should have been around 40%, not 15% or 20%. So that critical hit actually mattered. I mean, Tapu Phoenix is still on the field, so it's, it's still there. But it should have been way healthier. So now it's, it's difficult because the last one is a P2. And because of the special defense drop, P2 actually got a special attack boost, I think. I'm just gonna go for Rock Slide, just doing damage. Every damage on Celestia is good damage. Mighty Water connects. Let's see if I can finally get a flinch. I think I haven't flinched like once in this tournament. No flinch on the Celestia, Flash Cannon into the Landers for like 50% damage, and no flinch either into the Porygon. I mean, that's fine. I wish sometimes I can get like a flinch here and there, but nope. I mean, I don't need it, but it would be fine if I get it. Um, some left towers recovery. Four turns of trick room to soul. I have Urshiv in the back. Uh, I think I just kind of have to protect, to be honest, because if my opponent doubles the Tapu Fini, uh, because Tapu Fini is not boosted anymore because of the special defense boost, and also because of the crit, it's not that healthy anymore. I kind of have to protect. If the crit wouldn't have happened, I can just attack here, but I cannot afford to let them just attack the Fini. Warrior actually is going for a recover. Okay. Recover. I guess he wanted to play safe. And he actually reads my protect. Yeah, not it's not attacking the Fini. He probably knew that I had to like protect to get some left hovers. I could have just get the knockout on Celestia and that was game. I mean, even though he read that protect, it's still fine because I didn't want to risk it. I just don't think it's worth to risk it. Because I can still get some free left hovers recovery. And I have Urshifu in the back. And Sucker Punch might be enough to get rid of Celestia from that range, to be honest. I mean, I know Celestia as well as 3 defense, but... Come on, it's an Urshifu and it's, it's, it's red health, basically. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Plus 3 defense, though. What do you guys think? I think it's enough. Um, I'm just gonna call mine with Tapofini, I think. Yeah, call mine and Sucker Punch. I mean, there's not much I can do besides this. I just kind of have to hope this Sucker Punch is enough. Let's see, Urshifu, come on! Yes, Urshifu is enough to pick up the knockout on uh, Celestia. Try attack into the Tapofini, I think. Yeah, into the Tapofini slot. Tapofini is able to hang on. I'm gonna call mine again. Get some left towers recovery after this turn. And then the next turn I protect. So I get even more left towers. And that should be game, I think. Because Urshifu Sash is intact. I think he has two more turns of Trick Room. Yeah, two more turns of Trick Room. But it's like, it's pretty simple. I just protect this turn. The next turn I move less close combat. He can only attack one. And after that turn, Trick Room ends. And I just close combat again. I guess his only win condition would be like getting a paralysis, fully paralysis, or just a freeze into the Urshifu with try attack next turn. Because he's moving first. I mean, I'm just gonna protect this turn for sure. I'm just thinking, what can he actually do to have a chance of winning this game? Protect safe. Get some left hover recovery. Stole uh, one turn of Trick Room. Try attack into Urshifu, of course. He doesn't have any other damaging moves, so he has to go for try attack. Getting some left teeth back. Now Fini is guaranteed to survive, I think, because it's plus one special defense. So I can just combine again. No, no, no. I think I should just like attack. I, I think, yeah, I should double attack. Moonblast close combat. Again, the only win condition my opponent has is getting a freeze here. I don't think even a burn is going to save him. No freeze, no burn. Yeah, close combat. It's just 80% almost. And then, yeah, finish should just get rid of P2 from that range. So that should be game. GG to my opponent. I win game one now, guys. 1-0 ahead. Let me update the score.
And let's get into game two. One sec, let me put the score here. And this is one game for me. And yeah, so I think the plan was pretty solid. He led actually Celestila right off the bat. I was not expecting that to be honest, but as you saw, I could just like stall the Dynamax and indeed it was great for that. Um, it's, it's, it's exactly the reason why I had Indeedy not something like a Clefairy or Tuggies in that slot. Like, against Celestila, normally you cannot like just rely on Clefairy or Tuggies because they are weak to steal. And they are just vulnerable to fake tears. So your opponent can just fake tears airstream if they don't want to steal spike you. Or they can just steal spike you and taunt. Um, or something like that. But with Indeedy... You can just have that security against Grimmsnar because of Psychic Terrain mainly. And you're also not weak to Max Steel Spike. So that was why I had Indeedy. And, in, and it basically showed how good Indeedy can be against this type of teams. Uh, at least on Game 1. So now going into Game 2. I think like I don't have a reason to change my plan. Like my opponent is the one that needs to adapt. But how can he adapt? I suppose, um, I don't know, bring in, like, bring in Spectre, I guess. Spectre can taunt me, can also, um, just spam Snarls against Feeny, can taunt, can, can try to burn my Landers, even though I do have Lumberry, so I don't care about the Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, I think I just have to just repeat Landers and Didi with Urshifu and Feeny in the back and see how he adapts. Like... I don't see a reason not to do this, to be honest. Like, I guess what he can do is, as I said, go Spectre. But even if he goes Spectre, like, I can just... Swore Sands follow me, I think. So yeah, I'm pretty convinced that this plan is, is just fine for Game 2 as well. So let's get into Game 2. Let's see if my opponent adapts. I think, I think probably we're gonna see a Spectre. I guess you can also go for something like P2 lead this time around, but I don't think that's going to be that good for him. Actually, there's a P2, but with uh, Spectre. I was expecting like probably Grimstar, but no, yeah, Spectre, P2. Spectre makes sense, as I said. He can taunt me, he can snar me if I lead like with something like with Regilecki or, or Feeny even. So Psychic Terrain is up. What do I do here? I could just follow me, Swole Sands, just to play safe. I suppose it's gonna taunt me. I suppose it's gonna taunt me. The Spectre is sad, so I, even if I Swole Sands, I can't do, I can't one shot it. Mm. Follow me, Swole Sands. What do I have in the back? Virgin Foo Infini. I think Source Sense is fine here, and do I follow me? I think I'm actually gonna click Protect, because I want to see if he, like, falls for the bait of taunting my NDD. So I can get, like, a free turn for NDD next turn. No. Okay, he realized that Landers is a threat. He went for a taunt into the Landers, topping the Source Sense, and actually doubling into the Landers. That try attack did way more than what I was hoping. 40% almost. Hmm. This turn one didn't go my way, to be honest. I think here I'm just gonna click follow me and rock slide, to be fair. Like rock slide just to get some chip damage. I cannot source sense because I'm taunted. There is another taunt now into the DD. Yeah, Spectre doing his job. Just being disruptive, being annoying. Rock slide. Good chunk on Spectre. A critical hit into Porygon 2. Try attack goes into the DD. Doesn't do much. Doesn't do much. Like what? 24 HP? 24 damage. Um now I cannot follow me anymore because I'm taunted with DD. So I think I'm just gonna switch out Landers for Feeny. Feeny has lefties, can recover with lefties, can call mine. And yeah, indeed, it's just gonna spirit break. Not spirit break, sorry. It's gonna mystical fire uh, the Spectre, I guess. Yeah. I don't see a reason not to. 
I mean, I cannot even do anything else. I'm taunted. But I could switch out in DD. Yeah, of course, it's not worth it. Just mystical fire, get some damage. Drop special attacks. Tapu Fini is on the field. Let's see what he does. He could go for a snarl, taunt. I mean, taunt doesn't make sense. It's already taunted. Shadow Ball actually into the lander slot, so that's good damage into Tapu Fini. Yeah, like 40%. Mystical Fire into Spectre just to do some chip damage and also drop in the special attack in the process. Try attack into the lander slot as well. So this type of Vini is gonna take like almost 70% damage upon switching, which is of course not ideal. Good play from my opponent. Um two more turns of taunt. I think I'm just gonna protect here to get some leftovers and just Mystical Fire again. Yeah, why not? This is a very slow early game, guys. That's why my opponent, that's what my opponent is trying to do here. Playing slow. Let's see. So now what I have to do here is just okay, there's a snar, so this is gonna do even less damage. But I should take wait, what? Oh, that's a critical hit. Yeah, that's a critical hit. That's unfortunate. Spectre was minus one, and Didi was plus one, and that like non stab snarl did like 40% to DD. That's just not great, of course. Try attack. This time I went into the P2 just to drop the special attack also. So P2. P2 was doing okay damage, so I don't I didn't want that. Um now I can just like I mean no, I cannot follow me. I i I'm still taunted. But Taunt on Tapu Fini ended, so I could come mine now. But he knows that I know he has Taunt, so probably... Like, it's risky to come mine here. I'm just gonna attack. I'm just gonna get some damage off, because he can Taunt me again, and I don't want to lose a turn. And waste it. That's not into the DD. It's doing nothing, as you see, but unfortunately that crit... Like, made in DD now... Um, almost, almost into red health. And Money Water misses into the Spectre, actually, but at least it drops the accuracy on Porygon. And Mystical Fire is gonna be into the Spectre. Spectre is basically now minus two, so it's useless, almost. And Tri Attack misses into something, into Tapu Fini. Okay, okay. I mean, after all those crits, probably it's, it's fair, I guess. Indeed, he finally, finally can click something else, not only Mystical Fire. What do I click though? Do I click just Mystical Fire again? Follow me? Helping Hand maybe? No, I don't think Helping Hand is worth it. Uh, protect would be an option. Like, uh, he knows that I know he has Taunt, of course. He already taunted me turn one. But I'm gonna take the risk this time around since he's only spamming Snarls. I'm gonna take the risk to just set up a Calm Mind. Um, technically, to be safe, I could just follow me Calm Mind. But yeah, he went for a snarl, so no taunt, no taunt. I can just call mine free now. I mean, he's still controlling the damage output by just spamming snarls and snarls and snarls. So Tapu Fini is still, like, neutral, I think. Or even minus one, I don't remember. And Mystical Fire into the Spectre. Doing some, like, chip damage, 10%, not more than that. And try attack misses yet again into the Tapu Fini. Oh man, that P2 is literally blind. I mean, after the Muddy Water Accuracy drop, of course, because try attack is a move that you normally cannot miss. Um, let's see. So Tapu Fini is minus one special attack, as you can see, but at least it's plus one special defense. Um, I'm gonna try to call mine again, and this time I'm gonna protect with Indidi. But let's see if he taunts me. Yeah, this time he taunts me. This time he taunts me. No call mine. I could have played safe, I guess, and just like follow me, but the game is pretty, pretty slow. And that's just not ideal. Like, I need to find a way to keep Tapu Fini uh, boosted, but at the same time, indeed, he not taunted. Um, so I can just go for a follow me later or help me if I need to or whatever. But the fact that my Landers is 
around 60% is also not good because when I finally get rid of this Spectre, what do you think is going to happen? He's going to bring the Dynamax Alcila and I cannot just, of course, uh, Dynamax Tapafini knowing that I'm minus one and also knowing that P2 can just Eerie Impulse me later. So indeed he's still there, skanking on and Spectre is just spamming Snarls. Now Mighty Water connects them both, that's good, that's good. But I'm minus two now, so yeah, I'm not even like <laughs> being able to get rid of the Spectre now. Mystical Fire, again, into the Spectre, is not doing much damage. Spectre is not literally doing anything other than spamming Snarls. Try attack misses for the third time, wow. One single Mighty Water accuracy drop and it has missed three times, I mean, Try attack is not gonna do that much damage to Feeny anyways, but missing three times in a row is just it just sucks, you know. Um so now Spectre is gonna go down. Snar misses into Indidi. Not into Tapu Feeny, but into Indidi. Um I think it's still gonna be the same. Uh Mighty Water also misses, but into the P2, okay? Into the one that didn't matter. At least this time it didn't matter. Uh, Muddy Water into Spectre is finally, finally able to pick up the knockout. It's finally able to pick up the knockout into Spectre. Mystical Fire, so this P2 is gonna be minus two. But now the Celestina is gonna. Yeah, okay, so he didn't actually get the knockout on Didi. That's smart because now he brings um, Celestina, I think, and Celestina can pick up the knockout on Didi and get the Beast Boost. Which is what he wanted, I think. I think that's what he wanted. Probably Trick Room would have been also fine there for him. Because, I don't know, probably Celestial is faster. He wants to go for Air Streams. Faster than Didi, not faster than Feeny. Feeny should be always faster. Look at that. Feeny's minus three special attack. So he's literally not doing anything. I mean, at least I can calm mine so they don't do that much also to me. Um. I think I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna call mine and I'm gonna mystical fire the Celestia. So I wanna see if this Celestia is faster than Indeedee or not. Because this Indeedee has some speed investment. There's a Dynamax. Dynamax and Celestia now is a play for my opponent. Um, I think Indeedee should outspeed Celestia. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Cut mine from Chapafini, increasing that special defense. So Chapafini is, I think, plus two special defense now. Mystical Fire, so indeed he is indeed faster than Celestia. Celestia's minus one, and it's gonna get the beast boost, but it's at least gonna be back to neutral, so it's not plus one or something. And what is this Porygon gonna go for? Here impulse, try attack, trick room. Let's see, let's see. Uh, there's the beast boost, but getting that mystical fire special attack drop the previous turn was really, really huge because now the Celestia is just neutral. Um, there's a trick room, there's a trick room. I think he probably could have trick room the previous turn, to be honest, the turn he recovered. So that way he could have just like max two spike my DD first because he was slower. Um, I don't know, probably he didn't know that he was slower, I guess. And then just recover the next one with B2. So that way the Celestia would have been plus one and not neutral. But I mean we take those. Um, now we bring Landers, Trick Room is up. Four merchants of Trick Room. Um, I have to solve this four turns of Trick Room. Let's see. Um, I guess I could call mine. I could max Quake. I'm gonna max card just to solve turn of their Dynamax because they Dynamax first, so I can like at least afford to max card this turn. But actually, my opponent switched out P2 for Grimstar. So the last one was Grimstar. I wasn't sure what was the last one. Like, I, to be completely honest with you, I was not expecting him to bring Grimstar. Uh, for game two, after what happened in game one, the game time didn't do much for him, especially because of psychic terrain. But apparently, his plan was to just get rid of the Ndidi and just save the Grimstar for the end game. 
and I suppose spam uh, fake tears or scary face or whatever later. Um, I'm getting another calm mind, but I'm think I think I'm still minus one at least. Uh, special attack, but at least the special defense is, should be plus four now. I think it's plus four or plus three. I don't remember. Um, the max guard from Landers at least protected me from the max seal spike, but yes, yeah, plus three special defense. Um, three more turns of trick room. I'm just gonna moon blast the Grim Snarl. Minus one though, so that's just not gonna do much. I'm gonna double into the Grim Snarl basically. There's a the fake tears. There's a the fake tears into the Landers. Minus two. Is Landers gonna be able to survive this at minus two special defense? Let's see. I don't think so. Yeah, no. So Landers not being full health actually matter. So that turn one that he got a free uh, attack with B2 uh, cost me a lot in this end game because without being like without being full health, um, Landers was just vulnerable to that fake tears combo. At full health, I don't think they would have knocked out the landers, so I would have at least uh, get rid of the Grimson, I think. Moonblast max strike. Ah, oh, probably not. Because Moonblast didn't do more than 50%. But it would have been free damage to Grimson, at least. Um, yeah, and this is the last one of their Dynamax. So I bring Urchifu here. Let's see, they have P2 in the back. So let's see that Dynamax is over. They have P2 in the back. They're plus two defense, plus one special attack. Uh, two more turns of trick room. Let's see. Massage is intact. I'm gonna protect the Moonblast just to hope the Moonblast this time does more than 50 because the previous one did like what 48, 47 percent. So going for a fake tears like into Feeny. Okay. Just getting a drop on the special defense and air slash into Urshifu. Okay, so they protected. Urshifu protected and it actually uh, mattered. And Moonblast is not enough. Oh, he survived with like what? 2 HP, 3 HP? Tapo Phoenix is still plus one special defense though. Yeah, it's still plus one because I was plus three. So after the fake tiers, I'm only plus one. Last turn of Trick Room. I think he can double into the Urshifu to be honest. He could just like, because he has a P2 in the back, so he could just spear break, air slash my Urshifu. So I'm gonna sucker punch the Grimmsnar. Oh, he just goes for a Thunder Wave. So, of course, that blocked my my sucker punch. Yeah. And I get a Paralysis. Wow. I mean, the Paralysis probably didn't matter much. Yeah, Celsius is gonna bring me down to Sash. I went for Sucker Punch even though Grimmsnarl 4 times resist Dark. And Sucker Punch, of course, is not that powerful, so only base 70. Because, of course, Grimmsnarl is already red health. So, I was trying to cover him doubling into my Urshifu with Spirit Break and whatever with, from Celestila. But, unfortunately, it just didn't happen. Um, I think my only win condition here is getting an Accuracy Drop into Celestila. Let's see, I'm gonna go for it. Protect and Muddy Water. Oh wow, he's just going for fake tears. Fake tears, and yeah, he's just raiding my protect. Okay, good play, good play. Uh, Fini is still able to survive, and Muddy Water just. So avoids it. Yeah, that's game. I needed the Muddy Water Accuracy to drop, basically, to have a shot of winning this end game. Now, without the. Like, Muddy Water didn't even hit. But without the accuracy drop, like the game is pretty much over. There's no way I can one shot the Celestia with Urchifu from that range. And he still has B2, which is full health. Yeah, the game is pretty much over, I think. Um, and yeah, it's also boosting the special attack. Urchifu's 1 HP. Like, even if I close combat and somehow get a crit on P2 and get the knockout there. Um, I should win against Feeny because of the special defense drops that I have now. I'm gonna try. I wanna see how much this does. Close combat, it's not enough. It does around 80%. And yeah, that should be game. Flash cannon into Urshifu. And Porygon should probably just try attack here. 
Remember, the Porygon is plus one special attack because of download. And my Phoenix minus one special defense. There's a, the timer that appears. Three minutes left. Yeah, this was a really, really slow game. That's how my opponent decided to play here. I mean, he's using a team that is pretty bulky and slow and annoying. But yeah, 1-1 one, one now. One win for each. Now let's see what do we do for game three. I guess what I can do for game three probably is just um, bring Eleki, to be honest. Reason being, he didn't bring Garchomp this time. Eleki can technically do with the Celestila better because... Let's be honest, the Celestila has been a complete nightmare in these past two games. In game one, I could handle it with like Landers being a plus two, plus four, getting rock slides off. And then in the end game, Urchifu went for like a sucker punch. But it's still tricky, like very tricky to play around. And my way to get rid of it immediately is Dynamax Regilecki. So I might be fine bringing Regilecki this time, considering that he didn't bring Garchomp on game two. He brought it in game one, and Garchomp just didn't help him much. So, do I take the risk? Um, I think I could. Like, Regilecki in Didi, or even Regilecki Urshifu, actually. Because my opponent led with P2 and Spectre. So, if, if I go Regilecki Urshifu, I can technically pick up a knockout. I could Electro Web, we could blow the Spectre, or just Electro Web and close combat the Porygon. I guess. Based on the damage that Close Combat did this past two games, it was doing around 80%. So I suppose Electro Web should do 20% to P2. I mean, it's modest, it's life for Eleki. And. Hmm. I could just technically do whatever I want turn one if he leads the same, of course. That's considering if he leads the same. Urshifu Eleki, Electro Web Wiki Blow, or Electro Web Close Combat. I need the Electro Web because Spectre has Will O Wisp. So if I don't Electro Web to drop the speed, they can just burn me before I attack. So that's just not worth it. So let's see. Game 3 now. Game 3. Let's see how he leads. Is he going to change its lead? I don't think so. Is he going to bring Garchomp this time? Let's see. Okay. Spectre, Porygon 2 as a lead. Same lead from my opponent. Uh... And I'm changing to a Urshifu Reggie Eleki lead. Again, I can pick up my knockout here. Electro Web Close Combat. Or Electro Web Wiki Blow. I think I'm just gonna go for Electro Web Close Combat. Based on the damage, based on the damage that Close Combat was doing the past two games, I think Electro Web should put it in range of, an, of a Close Combat. And yeah, Spectre can even switch out here, but I guess Spectre can just try to go for a Will O Wisp. Just cover in case I don't go for Electro Web. But I'm going for Electro Web regardless. Spectre's not um, switching out. Electro Web did what? Like 20, 20 something percent to um, Porygon? That should be enough, right? Close combat. Oh, he actually survives. Oh, no. <laughs> in this game that I needed this, the, the close combat to do the same damage that it was doing on game one and two. I actually get a low roll, I think. And burn. Yeah, Willow is in Trick Room. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate. Oh, I needed either the Electro Web or the Close Combat to do a little bit more damage. I suppose P2 goes for a recover here, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna switch out Eleki for Fini. Fini can take anything. Can got mine later. Later. And do I sucker punch the Spectre? I think I'm gonna protect first. Just to stall turn of Trick Room. I can always just sucker punch later. Remember that we are in Trick Room and Urshifus is lower than Spectre normally, but because of the Electro Web, now Spectre is lower than Urshifus is moving first in Trick Room. So I cannot technically wiki blow first. Yep, there's a recover. No reason not to. Um, I guess the protect was fine, my end. Shadow Ball into the Leggy Slot that is now a tap of Fini. Wow. I mean, Tapafini can just get some recovery with lefties, anyways. So 
So now, I think I can just come line f safely here. I mean, Porygon has area pools. He has not used it entire set, but I guess in this situation, he kind of has to. Um, Calmine and Sucker Punch is the play I'm thinking here. Is Spectre gonna change? Like, is he gonna switch out? Nah, I think I just have to go for it. Yeah. Calmine and Sucker Punch. Even burn. Yeah, no switch out. Even burn, this should be enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Sucker Punch is enough. I'm gonna get a Calmine off. Let's see what the Porygon does. There's the Ear Impulse. Yep. Into Tapu Fini, not do like, of course, it's just to control Tapu Fini a little bit better. I'm calm minding though, so at least a special attack. I mean, at least special defense is still there. They cannot get rid of my special defense boost. So, Trick Room is only two, uh, two, more, two turns left. Let's see what he brings. I suppose Celestila. Just to Dynamax. I don't see Garchomp being brought here. Yeah. Oh, wait. Grimmsnarl, actually. Not Celestina. Why don't you bring Celestina here? You can just air see my Urshifu. I mean, yeah, you're going to be in Trick Room. Um, I'm just going to double protect here, I think. It's safer. Than any other play I can think of. Stall a turn of Trick Room, yeah. And then the next turn is the last turn of Trick Room. So next turn I can just double into the P2, sack Urshifu basically. And then I bring Reg Regileki. Once Trick Room is, is gone, I bring Regileki and I Dynamax. Let's see what he does. Irian pulls again into the Fini, no recover, no try attack, and Spear Break into the Urshifu, yeah. Okay. So one more turn of Trick Room left. Urge if it's burned, yeah, but close combat is still super effective and it should do around 40%, I suppose. So this is the last turn of Trick Room. I can technically just double into the P2. Uh, actually, I'm minus one, I think, it's a special attack. So yeah, I, I think I can I cannot afford to not come mine. I need to call mine because I need to be back at neutral. Because if he spirit breaks the Urshifu and recovers, uh, Dynamax Regilecki is not going to be able to one shot P2 from full health. So I need a type of Fini to do some damage the next turn with Moonblast. And if I minus one, of course, I'm doing less damage. He's not clicking recover though. Spirit break into the Urshifu, yeah. Into the Tapu Fini, actually. He ignored the Urshifu. Why? I mean, I just protected the previous turn. I don't I don't see why you would do that. Probably was expecting a switch out. I mean, we take those. I'm just... I was not counting on keeping Urshifu, but if you don't attack me, I'm just going to close combat you. And now Trick Room is over, and I should just outspeed you and get rid of the P2. Nice. I mean, even Burn Urshifu is still doing this job. Blossom special defense, yeah. Last turn of Mrs. Rain. It's not that it matter much, but. Hmm. What's the last one? I mean. Have to imagine it is Celestia, right? Uh, I'm just gonna double into the P2. No reason not to. Pretty safe. Close combat. I guess we can look could have been also an option there, but yeah. Close combat hits everything. Anyways, in case he switches out, hits everything by Inspector, and Inspector is already gone. Uh, Moonblast not even doing 50%. And a spear break into the Urshifu this time. No, he's just not attacking the Urshifu. Wow. I guess he predicted my protect this time, so I can just protect and get rid of P2, but no, there's no reason for me to do that, I think. 
I mean, I was just hacking Urgifu two turns ago. So I can get a free switch into Regilecki. Once Trickrum is gone, and I can max line in immediately. There it is. So let's see, that was the last one. So my Dynamax Regilecki that is waiting in the back is really, really good. It's, it's looking clean now. I also have Landers in the back. The reason why I brought Landers is because I wasn't sure if he was going to bring Garchomp this time around. So I could just Dynamax Landers if I need to. But because it was not the case, Regilecki is, is the Dynamax option here. Um, I think I'm just going to protect and start Urch sack Urshifu. I'm going to get some um, Leftovers recovery, which is nice. And I'm just going to close combo with the Grimstar. Um, yeah, I think close combat in the Grimstar is fine. I could technically Wiki Blow the Celestia, but because I'm burned and it's going to Dynamax, I don't think it's worth it. I have Red Lakey anyways for Celestia in the back. So I'm expecting just like a Max Seal Spike slash Max Airship into the Fini and a Spear Break into the Urshifu. I mean, technically, I could double into the Grimstar, and I'm faster, so let's see what he does. I'm protecting with Tabu Fini. Scary face, actually. Into the Tabu Fini. Why? I mean, I guess he wanted the Tabu Fini to be slower, so I don't, like, get a Calm Mind off first, or a Moonblast into the Grimstar, or something. Yeah, Airstream is doing literally nothing to protect. It's plus one speed now. So let's see this plus one. Grimstar is plus one. But I know that my, my Ndidi outsped Celestial in game two. So, and my Ndidi is to be to outspeed Urshifu plus one speed. So if my Ndidi outsped, that means this Celestial shouldn't be able to outspeed Urshifu plus one, right? Because it was slower than my Ndidi. So, I think this is just... I'm just gonna double the Grimstar. Yeah, close combat and move last. Urshifu should be faster than everything here. Yep, it is faster. Close combat. Gets rid of the Grimstar. That's good. But Fini should be slower than Celestia because Celestia has plus one speed. Yeah, so Celestia just attacks and it's getting rid of the Fini, so Urshifu is still there. Wow. I'm very surprised that Urshifu is still there. My opponent never actually gets to attack it. And he had a lot of chances. Celestia has plus one special attack now. But come on, I have Regilecki. I'm just gonna bring Regilecki in Dynamax. Celestia plus two speed, yes, but Celestia shouldn't be able to outspeed it like it's impossible. Even max speed Celestia hits uh, 124, right? So two times that is 248, and Regilecki modest max speed is 252, so it's impossible for him to outspeed me. And that's considering they're like team at max. Which they are not, because my DD outsped, so they are not even max speed modest. Yeah, I'm just gonna Dynamax Regilecki, no reason not to max lining. I guess I could protect just to start the last turn of their Dynamax. But no, I'm just gonna max lining here in Wiki Blow. There is no way he can stop that. Like, Celestia is impossible to outspeed me, even a plus two. And he can outspeed Urshifu, I guess, but if he attacks the Urshifu slot, Regilecki just has another Max Light in the next turn. It's game. Dynamax Regilecki in your screens. I'm not expecting this Max Lightning to get the knockout, but it should do around 80% at least. And so see that cannot be faster than me. Yep, so there it is. Regilecki moving first. Max Lightning into a Dynamax Assault with Celestia. 70%, 75%. And setting up electric terrain. And Urshifu is going to follow with a Wiki Blow. So let's see that, of course, is faster than Urshifu. Airstream yet again. Doing a good talk. But Urshifu is just going to click Wiki Blow. Who should, of course, get the knockout here. It's impossible. Who's burned? Yeah. 
So, but it's at least 20% damage. And most importantly, now the Dynamax is over. And they cannot attack to both. They have to pick one target. So I just max landing and close combat or we can blow or whatever. Yeah, we can blow. And that's game. Like, there's no way. I don't think he even, he even outspeeds Eleki at plus three speed now. Let's we'll see that. Yeah. He's not able to outspeed Eleki. Eleki is just going to clean this game for us. And that was a really, really intense set. A lot of defensive moves. A lot of defensive positioning. And we managed to win this round five. Now we are... Um, we are four wins and one loss. So thank you guys for being here. I hope that you enjoyed this content, guys. Let's continue tomorrow, hopefully, with the next video. Uh, we're going to be uh, analyzing the round six of this Players' Cup Latin America Regionals Qualifier. And thank you so much for your support. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you guys. Peace.